Hey, this is Geraldine here. I'm really excited to be with you today. I'm going to um, run through a little project with you making a mug rug. So this is the one we're going to make today. It's really good fun. It's a hexagon. Um, I have... Oh, I can't pick them up. I have a whole set of hexagons that I've used to create the shape. But I also have for you um, some notes and a template of the hexagon. So you're going to be able to download this and cut it out. So what are you going to need? Well, first of all, um, obviously you'll need a fabric. These are some little ones I did with coffee mugs on them. And the one I'll show you today will be the same. It will just have a different design. I then went ahead and did a big one and this is just using a built-in design on the machine with some uh, jelly roll strips, two jelly roll strips going around and around. So that's that. So today you'll download your pattern and your free design. We are going to use the uh, 14 square hoop and I am doing that deliberately and you'll see why when we get there. You will need a square of fabric, approximately a uh, 10 and a half inch square of fabric to do your embroidery. You'll need about the same for the back. Um, this is just a piece I had left over. So this is really a great project for using up your scraps. The other thing, if you have it, is some of this plastic stuff because after a while um, with coffee and tea these are going to get a bit grotty so if you wanted to you could put some of this plastic over the top now this doesn't look great and this is how it ends up looking after you buy it and take it home um, if you're finding it's all crinkly and terrible you can cut a piece put some fabric over it and iron it with a warm iron and then just leave it and let it cool or you can attack it with your hair dryer and it will come nice again so it doesn't look like it does it it looks a bit of a mess but that's what you do with that so what we're going to do is I want to show you next how I've marked up my fabric oh the other thing is some wadding sorry now I'm using this um, it's called Parlane or Quilters Felt. Um, it is quite thin and it is um, sticky on the other side. So I've actually ironed this to the back of the fabric I'm going to embroider. You need to be um, a bit mindful of hot things going on here on your table. So you might want to use two layers of this just to be sure or there is a product you can get that you could use that is heat resistant. I think they use it for oven mitts and things like that. So, I'm going to take you to the table now and I'm going to show you what I've done to the fabric. Back in a tick. Okay, we're back at the table. I have my hoop here, um, the grid that comes with the hoop, and my fabric. Now, I just went ahead and placed my grid in the center of this um, square of fabric. I'm using a friction um, heat away pen and I've marked the center dot, the top, bottom, left and right. Okay, so this is going to give me my alignment in the hoop to make sure everything is square. So once you've done that then I can put that back over there. I've then taken my hexagon you will have a sheet of paper and you can um, fold it let me just take this one off of here already folded you can fold it on all the directions so on all the creases I've folded this paper so now if I fold it in half I can get that halfway mark on those lines. Now this is going to help us once we finish doing our embroidery with cutting out our design. 
So now with my hand firmly on the bottom, I can then push that up and I want to trace around the shape of the hexagon. Now because I have the template, I've done exactly the same thing. I've lined up my center dot with where these lines meet and then I've just drawn around that shape. So when I take it away, you have the five dots in the center here and the outline. We're then going to take the inside part of our hoop. Now your template, it should you should be able to read it so that it's facing you, left and right with the arrow up the top. This is really, really important. And you'll see why in a second. So I'm going to place the grid in there like that. And I'm going to place the center dot back on the center dot. My top one lines up here and my bottom one. So all I'm worried about at this stage is the dots. I'm then going to open this up reasonable amount so that I can then lift. I'll just move this over so I'm in the camera. So I can lift this up and place it in the hoop. Now what you want to do is this arrow here must line up with the arrow on the top of the hoop. With this particular hoop, it's very easy to put it in like this, which is skew width. I'm out a good centimetre here, but I actually could push this down and do it up. And then when you take it to your machine, the hoop will actually look like it's sitting off and you won't realise what it is. Now, it's very noticeable here, but what if we were hooping a bigger piece of fabric where it was covering those markings. So you need to be aware of what would be going on underneath here. It more so is with this hoop than any other hoop. That's why I've chosen this hoop to begin. So you must make sure that these are square. Now I'm just going to line up my dots so I'm happy here. Oh, look at that. I'm happy all the way down the bottom. My dots line up. So I'm just going to lift my hoop and tighten it with my fingers. Now, do not be tempted to attack your hoop screw with a screwdriver. It should only be ever finger tight. If you start doing it up with the screwdriver, you're going to... Um, strip the screw, the threads on the screw and you're going to constantly then be having to buy new screws. Okay, happy, 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 happy. Okay, we're good. Now you can see my fabric isn't out here. It doesn't matter. I don't need it. It's quite secure in there and now I'm ready to take it to the machine and start stitching out our little Zentangle design. Okay, I'll see you at the machine. Okay, so here we are at the machine and I've just attached um, my hoop. I've loaded the design onto the screen. Now, with the template, when you bring in a design, my needle now should come down. I'm just going to stretch across. So I'm hoping you can see this. My needle is absolutely in that dot in the center of um, that hoop, okay? So that means then I know everything is going to be placed where I want it. So I'm going to just hit the start button. Um, before I do, I might just thread, re-thread this machine and show you something. It is really, really important. I know you all know how to sew, but how you thread the machine is very important. Two hands thread in both hands. You take it to the top. Now, if I stop talking for a minute, I want you to listen for a click. I hope you heard that. I'm going to do it again. That click is very important. That means that the thread is in the tension at the top here. I still hold with the right hand, 
bringing the left one up and down. Now you do need to make sure you don't miss this take up lever when you're threading your machine. And then down. I'll just use my beautiful needle threader. Oops, I forgot to put the thread down. There we go. Little trap there. Fantastic. I love it. Okay, so I'm ready to go. I'm going to just hit the start button. This design, um, I've got the machine set on, I'm going to set it on 500 and it takes 8 minutes. So it's going to go all the way into the center and then it will go all the way out. Okay, our design has finished and there it is and you can see my little dot is right in the centre. Now this is going to help us along with the other lines we drew in cutting this piece out. So I'm going to go back to the cutting table and I'll meet you over there. Okay, so here we are back, we have our design done. Now we actually need this to be a bit smaller because the inside line on your template is actually your embroidered piece. So the difference there is an inch. So what I'm going to do is just take my ruler and get my inch. Okay. All right, why don't I do it this way? I'll take my hexagon place it on there and I'll just trim it back and then I'll take the inch off. So that's one, two, this is one of those twisty ones which is really cool. Now I need these to be an inch smaller 
again. So if I take this ruler now, if I get it the right way out, and I'm going to place my inch line on the edge of my fabric and trim it back an inch. I'm just leaving that one there so I know where I started and I don't keep going. That's three. Four. And one more. Okay. So these bits and there's our center done we now need the back fabric but we need that to be the full size of your template so again I'm just going to use my template here and do the same thing That inch that we've cut off is going, we're going to bring the back to the front to create a binding. Those that know me know I don't like hand sewing, so I'll pretty much do anything to get out of doing any hand sewing. Okay, there you have it. So again, here's our little template. I've creased this on every single crease there is and this now is going to be a guide for our, our where we put our inside piece. So I'm just going to eyeball it and then just see how, oh, how's that, just a tiny bit out there. So what I'm looking at here, I'm in half and I've got the two dots which is the halfway centered. So now basically I should have an inch all around. So I can stick a pin in this. What I like to do now is stitch these two together by putting the edge stitch foot on the machine and stitching around here. Now what that does is actually when we come back and sew again but it's going to create on the back two lines of stitching which actually looks quite nice. So I'm going to set the machine now for normal sewing and put my um, hem foot G on the machine for doing your blind hems and I'm going to use that to stitch these two together then we're going to press these. Okay so we're back at the machine and we're going to stitch our embroidered piece to the backing fabric and to do that I'm going to use this foot now this is the G foot for the 15,000 and you'll see here there's a bar on the foot. Okay, so what we're going to do is attach it to the machine and that bar is going to sit up against the white which is the edge of our mug rug and we're going to adjust the needle position to the left all the way so that we're going to sew just on a border inside on the white. Okay, so I'm going to attach the G foot to the machine. Now you notice when you turn your machine on sometimes where you lift the foot up and down at the back now is deactivated. So if I put the foot down and then put my hand around the back, I can lift the foot up and then back down onto the bar of the foot and then I can lift it back up again 
and we're ready to sew. So what we're going to do is place this under here so that the bar on this foot is in line with the white edge. Now I'm not going to start in the corner, I'm going to come down a little bit and take that pin out. I'm going to adjust my needle position so that it's all the way to the left. So the setting will be zero. You can see that needle moving all the way. Dum -dum, that means it's all the way. So now the needle is coming down all the way over here and this is my guide on the edge of the fabric to sew with. So I'm going to go ahead and sew that and hope that you can see what I'm doing on the video. Now when I get to a corner I'm going to lift the foot and turn my work around but I have my needle down so that you can see the needle is in my work. Now you can set your machine so that it always stops with the needle down or that it always stops with the needle up. And this is something I'll go further into in the machine tutorial classes. So now you can see I'm back in line with this side, so I'm just going to sew down here. Until I get to the end and I'm going to lift and go again. out of here I'm keeping that white fabric in line lift one more stitch and turn and I'm still keeping it in line with the edge of the fabric last one. So I only have to get to here now. Now on the front of the machine is the bullseye which is the locking stitch. So when I get to here I'm going to just push this button here which is the bullseye and let it lock off the stitches. And there we go. So it will do four, oh, wrong one. So it's just stitching on the spot, it locks off, I can cut the thread and we're done. So there we have it. So now I need to take it to the ironing board and press these sides into the front. So I'll meet you over there. Okay, so now what happens is at these edges we're going to fold the green fabric into the white okay but I want you to work anti-clockwise so around to the right and you'll I'll explain why as we go so I press it once and then again and this is going to then give us a nice seam I'm just going to give that a little bit of a belt with the iron and it's quite hot so now if I turn it around I'm going to do the same thing on this side now by doing it this way all in the same direction Sorry, I know my hands are in the way here, but okay. So what happens here is 
this seam here, this edge and this edge need to just butt up to create a nice corner. And we want the corner facing that way because we're going to come back here and sew and we don't want, I'll show you what happens, to run up against a big lump here when we're going around. So by doing it this way, our seams are all facing that way which makes it easier to sew. So I'm just going to pop a pin in here. And then we'll go again. So in half, take the iron. Give it a nice good press. And then turn again. And here I'm watching it's quite a hot touch. Okay. Now okay. So I'm going to put the pin in this way facing that because that's the direction I'm going to be sewing so they'll be easier to come out so I'm just checking here that I have a nice corner and then I'll continue on so in half So once we get these seams tucked in, if you did want to add the plastic to the top, and I do have one there that I have put the plastic on, we would just unpin and slide the plastic in place. bit puckered but it's fine once we get stitching and again I'll just cut that thread off here we go okay so this is nice this is nice down here going to give that a bit of a press there, take that pin out, okay, alright, Now, everything is quite hot, but I'm okay with that. Okay. If you were going to put the plastic in, oh, I might just take this back to the cutting table and show you. Basically, there's a couple of things I wanted to show you with the plastic, but we would unpin and just slide, I'm not sure if that's coming up on the camera, I think you should be able to see it, but it's going to slide in to fit the white exactly. I'm not sure if you've seen 
these. These are clover clips. They're fantastic for doing binding. And we really don't want to be sticking the pins into the plastic. The binding clips really just help hold everything in place. So you can see that one goes in there. Take this pin out. Okay, just hold these corners in place, one more clip over here, okay, so then we'll take it to the machine and stitch it, so here's um, a blue one I've stitched and it does have the plastic in there so it means if it gets stained with tea or coffee you can just wipe over with the plastic but to cut <coughs> your plastic I found it much easier if we take the template Draw on it with your texture, and then so I've just placed that on there. Drew around it with a texture, and now you can see the markings. So you're able to cut it, and also if you use those clips, it holds them in place. The other thing is, if you have some scraps left of that plastic and you have lovely threads like this that uh, don't have anything to close the ends off you can take a strip and just wrap the end of your thread let's try again in the plastic and pull it tight and there you have it it won't fall off. You can reuse it a million times. Just undo it and stick it back down. Great trick for your threads. So, okay, back to our um, placemat. I'm going to take this back to the machine and I'm going to attach the walking foot with the stitch in the ditch attachment. So I'll see you over there. Okay, so we're back at the machine and I'm going to use my AccuFlex walking foot. This is the standard foot on here. So I'm just going to take this off and just show you this. So, whoops. This is what the foot looks like. So this here is the part that walks. And just here you'll see these little lugs. So I'm going to put on my stitch in the ditch. So this is called the SD foot. And again, this has a bar here. But just here on each side are two little lugs. So what we need to do is put this foot on so those lugs slide through here. I'm just going to... Turn it around this way, and 
and then just push and that's as simple as that. When I put it onto the machine, once it's screwed in place, you do need to make sure that this is pushed forward so it's engaged, otherwise the foot won't walk. So I'm just going to attach that now. I like to leave the screw in there and attach the foot. I find it's much easier to get it in place. Now once you have the foot on, I do recommend that you give it just a little turn with the screwdriver to make sure it's connected properly. So now what we're going to do is place the bar on the edge of the green fabric. Now as it stands right now, I put the foot down, the needle is in the centre so it's not even on the green. So I'm going to adjust my stitch position to the right. So I'm going to move my needle so that the setting is set at 6.4. So the default setting is 4.5. So now at 6.4, I am hope you can see this on the video, I'm just in on the green. Okay, maybe it could just go one more blip. <clears throat> okay, so now all I have to watch is this black and it's going to come along and keep everything nice and straight for me. So here goes. Now I'm going to stitch until I can see that corner and the needle has gone right down into that corner and then I'm going to lift the foot and turn around and you'll see now that my guide is right on the edge of the fabric for the turn. I'll take the next clip out. Now this is the walking foot is just gliding over the top of that plastic without any problems at all. And again I'm just going to get to the corner. As soon as I can see that corner where the needle comes down, that's it. Okay, so I'm almost back to the beginning. This is where the beginning was. I'm just going to push that aside. I'm going to press the lock off button when I get to those stitches and the machine will automatically lock off in place. And that's it. We're done. Now you can see on these corners what I meant here how they were pointing away from the direction we were going. So it just then gives us a nice finish. We can, um, you could stitch out here if you wanted to. I don't, I tend to just leave it like that. You do need to be careful now if you press because I have put the plastic in there. So if you have two, you won't want to be hitting this with the iron. And then on the back you'll see there's two rows of stitching around the back. The first row was the white that we anchored to the green and then the second row is this row of stitching here. So I'm just going to take this back to the cutting table and um, we'll finish up. Okay, so we're back here at the table. So here's my two mug rugs. So this one has the plastic cover and this one doesn't. So I do hope that you give those a, um, a bit of a go. They're quick and easy and lots of fun. So you will get the design for those as a download. You'll also um, just get some notes here um, that you'll be able to download as well. I did use um, these designs 
uh, that I digitised with the coffee cups on to do a set for myself. So that's that for now. Just quickly um, going to look at doing this in the next video. This design is done in the, um, the quilting hoop. So this is a design that I've digitised. There is wadding on the back. It's a nice, quick, easy project, any colour way you like. So um, that's what I'm going to do next. Also, have a look while you're there. My Swirls and Curls CD. This is the Hoop Full of Bubbles. This is one of the designs that's on the Swirls and Curls. And these are good uh, quilting designs. Um, this is the one with the hearts. And this is um, the Echo Quilting where the machine does all this quilting in the around the edge and then this is the same design without the echo quilting so just circles and I did do a little sample of the wedding ring quilt in a different color so this is that so it does come in two colors uh, but you could sew it all out in one color or here I've done uh, blue circles with the white stitching on the background whereas on the other quilt I did all one colour in pink so this is my cushion from the wedding ring quilt so I hope you enjoyed that ladies I do look forward to seeing you next time in the next class where we'll be doing a bit of quilting in the hoop till then bye for now